Hello folks, here are 5 gameplay features you might not know about Honkai Star Rail. First off is a surprise to non-controller players. One benefit of controllers is being able to pause the screen and enjoy the character models or poses that often go by way too quickly. And we have all heard about Sila's Sea of Butterflies, but do we ever take a step back and enjoy it? Look how nice this dynamic pose is, and we miss it most of the time. And pausing isn't just for your team, you can freeze frame the enemy attacks as well, so you can see some nice explosions or close-ups of certain enemies. Next two are related to the simulated universe. Ever wonder what happens when you have max immersifiers and try to claim more from the rewards? Well, the game is smart and stops you from claiming it. But what happens if you are not max? What about having 7 out of 8? Well, the game lets you claim all 4 immersifiers and puts you over the limit. This means you don't actually waste or lose any of them and lets us take our time grinding the SU. Number 3 really helps out during planar fisher events with double rewards that we get every patch. When you already max out your weekly points, but still have some extra time on your hand, then go ahead and start another run. Continue as normal and beat the final boss. Claim the double relics if you can, and if you don't have the extra immersifiers or stamina, you can hold off and come back later. The important part is to not take the white portal out. Instead, push escape and pick leave for now. This will save the run's progress. Now wait for the weekly reset and go back into the SU. Continue that stage and now take the white portal. This will give you the full points for clearing and give you a head start for that week. Next one's an old freebie that's been around since the game launched. If you mess up really badly or am dying to bad RNG, instead of giving up on the run, just Alt F4 or to click the X on the program if you have it windowed. When you load back in, you'll be right in front of the last fight. You don't keep the technique points you use, but since we can use food in the SU now, you can easily refill it. This trick lets you retry any fight in the later stages without slowly grinding your way back to the end which is really helpful for the swarm. Number 4 is to get rewards for previous events you have missed. It's not for every event, it's for some but it's better than nothing. And the ones with a check mark are the ones you already have all the rewards for. The ones without, you can get more stuff. So let's say the boulder tournament. If I go to where the event is, talk to the NPC to pull up the event, I can see that I have all the rewards for the first part. And then the second part, I am missing these two right here to complete the exhibition within five or six turns. So let me do that real quick. Six and a half hours later. And done. Finish the stage in four cycles. Now I can get both of these rewards. Sadly, the rewards are the usual stuff like stellar jades and credits and some materials, and not the missable event light cones that we really, really want. But it's better than nothing, I guess. Last up is a niche feature. You can preview how much health you lose from some attacks that cause HP. This is mostly for Blade and Arlen, since we don't have many HP sacrificing units yet. But having this preview might be helpful in the future when some powerful effects need HP thresholds to be met before activating. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope at least one of these features are a surprise. I think the controller freeze frame is really neat. Oh, and as always, have fun out there, Trailblazer.